I'm feeling um, a beautiful kind of warm, uh, fuzzy feeling from the conference so far. Um, really enjoying it. Um, so my name is Sinead Sheehan. I'm a lecturer in psychology at the University of Galway, but um, I don't know, I'm, I'm many other things as well. Um, I'm sure as, as many of you have many roles as well. So I'm one of the coordinators with the what we've called the Climate Justice Universities Union. And we started this um, union also for, for very many reasons. But but one one of the things we're doing is we're going around Ireland to um, to try to find out uh, how to leverage um, the university's transformative potential in a way that that is going to be, um, I suppose, for for the greater good. Is that is that is that the best way to put it? Um, maybe I'll I'll let the other people, the other people in the panel, introduce themselves as well. Um, do you want to go ahead? John, do you want to go? Yeah, I'll jump in. Um, thanks everyone for for coming along. Um, Great to, to see you here again, wherever you're joining from, please do. Um, you know, <clears throat> we only have an hour together. Um, ordinarily, I think we'd, we'd like to to use time to, to get to know a bit about each other um, and, and actually make connections. This is a lot of, of what we want to do with this session and the work that we are engaged with generally. But because time is short, um, please do just introduce yourself in the chat, maybe your name and, and where you are joining from. It'd be great to know that much at least. So my name is Callum McGeown, uh, also based in Ireland, uh, currently as a researcher at Maynooth University, um, focusing on, on climate justice uh, generally, but also a member of the, the coordinating team of the, the Climate Justice Universities Union, uh, which Sinead just mentioned. Um, I have also dropped the the web address for the Climate Justice University Union into the chat. So um, do go and have a look at that at some point um, and, and join if you wish and, and follow and continue to engage and connect uh, and do all those lovely things. Um, yeah, uh, really looking forward to, to engaging more with you throughout this session. But bef before we get started, I'll, I'll pass on to either well, John, do you want to go to introduce yourself? Yes, Iha White Galer, a cordial um good evening everybody and um lovely to um to be here. So I won't say too much more. It's it's wonderful to connect with uh you all. So essentially our union is the people who give a shit. You know, many of us in the academy have access to resources, power, status, and knowledge. And we simply cannot continue, colleagues. Um in a business as usual manner while the world is on fire. So that's partly what our motivation is in, in, in Ireland that we can talk about the, uh, our, our story and how we've connected um, decarbonization to decolonization, our rather strange experience in Ireland as a European country that was also colonized and the, the long legacy um, of that. And we can't um, not recognize it particularly just I'll just mention one thing and then I'll shut up is that um, what's going on in the genocide in Palestine is connected to the eco side that we see happening around the world. So that eco side genocide nexus is very much, you know, part of what we're also thinking about. But um, we are interested in seeing how can we connect together across, you know, the globe because the reality is the people who are wrecking the planet are very well organized. You know, many of you may be familiar with that wonderful phrase from Malcolm X, where he said, we're not outnumbered, we're out-organized. So part of what we need to do is how can we, in the academy, outside it, interested in, you know, moving um, the shift, the necessary shift that we need of justice and sustainability coming together. Um, that's what the union that we've set up is uh, aim to do. Um, but I think we're, we're, we're only part of it. We're a small part of a, a larger movement. So I'm really interested to hear what other people have to say. So I'll pass on to, uh, to Mark. Thanks, John. Hi, everyone. My name is Mark. I work in the Atlantic Technological University. 
but I'm also on, on secondment with a government agency called the Higher Education Authority um, for Education for Sustainability as a policy advisor. And I suppose to follow on from all what has been said already, what this sort of demonstrates is that, you know, we don't view sustainability as a competitive advantage where some universities would might see it that way. We think we have to rise above that and collaborate. So the fact that we have four different universities and other colleagues who we could nearly have every university in Ireland represented here in this group, that's really given me a lot of hope um, that, as John said, people actually do care. And you don't necessarily need everybody at the start, but you do need a, a, a representation across. So I suppose that's what it illustrates from an Irish perspective. And we don't want to limit it to just Ireland, um, you know, we want to create a movement and bring invite everyone in who cares. And I think care is the key word around all of this is care for ourselves, care for our students, care for society, communities, and ultimately the environment and the biosphere as well. So delighted to be here. Thanks. Yeah. And, and we want we want very much to link in with I know there's a lot of movements out there that we don't know about. So I suppose um while it, you know, we we devised this question based on what we we thought maybe this conference was about, and we we thought that that if we go to the conference, we can meet people who might know the answer. Um, so the question that that we want to discuss today is what can an international alliance of higher education staff, students, activists, and anyone else do about the planetary crisis? So what we want to know is. You know how how do you think that that we we can work together? So that's that's going to be our our ultimate goal is to get you talking about that and and for us to to hear back and and co-create and uh, share and pollinate and cross ref, whatever just just mix mix up our all what everybody here brings something to the table. Everybody here has has part to play and. And we want to know how how can we work together? How, what can we do together? Um, uh, maybe uh, it would be really interesting to find out who's who's here, who's who's in the room. Um, I know some people have introduced themselves already. Would would you mind just maybe popping something in the chat, um, just for for anyone who's who's arrived or who's missed it? And yeah, just um, who are you? Uh, where are you? And what what brings you here? If you wouldn't mind popping that in the chat. I'm doing it right now. Great, so we have Stephanie, resident faculty at the University for Peace in Costa Rica. Welcome, Stephanie. Kat also uh, joined, said she's already joined the Climate Justice Universities Union before the session. It's good to see. Maura says, in the process of envisaging, envisaging the small scale learning environment devoted to the principles we all know by now, after the slaughter of a progressive university in the United States, loosely connected with the University for Peace in Costa Rica also. Yesterday, and um, she told me she's from Ireland as well. So, hi, Maura. <laughs> well, maybe as um, Fantastic to see people joining from from all about. Um, so again, welcome, and hopefully we will have well, we will have a chance uh, later in the session to actually speak to each other um, properly. So again, welcome, and and maybe before we do move on into the the real substance of the session, it's worth giving a bit of background as to what well, what it is we, we hope to achieve with this, as Sinead has already spoken about, but a rationale for doing it in this way. So um, the idea of being a, a people's assembly, so uh, a space to 
de deliberate um, for any given the question that we want to address today. Again, being what can an international alliance of higher education staff, students, and activists do about the planetary crisis? The idea being that you know, we all come here clearly from different places around the world, different places in life, different places in our career, with different knowledges, uh, different experiences, abilities, um, and so on. And to create a space where we can bring all that with us um, to, to discuss questions like this and others um, and see how we can maybe uh, co-produce, co-create um, uh, possible answers, solutions, pathways uh, to that that draws on our different experiences and so on. Uh, so this is a tool that we've been using in Ireland for the last year. We've had several meetings um, uh, and that's what the Climate Justice Universities Union emerged out of in the first place. Uh, the first of these was uh, about a year ago in Galway on the west coast of Ireland. Um, broadly under uh, the heading of, of what should higher education institutions do about the planetary crisis. Um, so in these events, what we do is bring people from universities across the island, staff, students, uh, local community members and activists into a room with a question like we have today um, to then discuss those, uh, but hopefully go beyond discussion as well as, you know, again, to, to kind of co-create potential action plans um, and, and see how we collectively can use our collective power to, to maybe uh, begin to advance that. Um, because for me anyway, um, universities have such, such inherent power um, within society, uh, the economy, politics, um, and so on. Um, but there's clearly a need for, for great change in all of those in all of those sectors um, to, to properly address the planetary crisis. Um, so hopefully we as people who are stakeholders in, be it staff, students, whatever, in our universities, um, can begin the work of, of maybe leveraging or regaining part of that power within those institutions uh, to serve a, a better purpose for a more just and sustainable world. Sinead, is there anything you'd like to, to add on to that before we get started? No, I don't. I don't have anything to add to that. I think you've you've kind of nailed what 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 brings us here and what what we're about. And um, thanks so much to everyone for who commented. It's um yeah, it's really yeah, it does give me hope. You know, to to be here and to to meet other people who are you know also on a path of um. I'm trying to find exactly what it is we all have in common, but I feel like there is something, you know, there is something that we all in, have in common, you know, that that we 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 know that what's happening is not right and it's not okay, and that and that something different, you know, can and should happen, and that we are we're willing to try, we're willing to try to to do that to to make that change and to um to work together and meet other people. Um, does anybody else want to say anything else um before? We go into breakout rooms. It's the only thing perhaps I, <clears throat> I could add. I, I think many of us feel alone um, or that we're part of a small minority. And, and that probably is the case for many of us in our various um, institutional, um, national contexts. But when I look around, what you know, events like this or um, others, uh, you realise that there are more people that we're connected to. And, and I don't mean that in a kind of, you know, it, it's easy and the, the solutions are very pat in a way. There's still a struggle um, ahead of us, but, you know, we need to have these international links that many of us who often feel like we're in a minority or alone, uh, we only feel alone because we're not connected with others. And I think that's the most important thing about uh, all of what we discuss, not the, uh, you know, the topics or the issues and so on is the human to human relationships it's, it's connecting with each other i mean that's really what's the most important thing so i really congratulate the organizers and Sinead who took the initiative from our end um in, in doing this but so we only have a, a short time together so hopefully we can build upon that and have other conversations afterwards because you know the last thing i'll say is that we are and it's probably it's not a uniquely irish thing to say but we're, we're, we're very good at storytelling 
in Ireland. And the reality is that uh, human existence and our life on this beautiful planet uh, is a story. We, we live in storied residence um, in the various places that we temporarily in, in, inhabit. And part of what we've you know, done in the last 200 years, we've just told a really, not, not a negative story. I think we should thank capitalism and carbon and so on. They've done great things. Um, but now it's time to move on to a different story. So I think it's about, you know, sharing our stories, our perspectives. And there's no right or wrong answer because, as somebody said to me the other day, uh, things are so bad, we need, we even need the introverts. You know, the, the extent of what, what we um, need to uh, attend to is unprecedented. There is no right or wrong answer. Um, but it is about us at least being emotionally and to the extent that we can being psychologically and, and, and otherwise honest with each other. You know, I'm a professor, male, sci, white guy from Europe, and I cry a lot about the, the work that I'm doing because I've got two children and I'm really worried about their futures. Uh, and yet I find it really frustrating in the profession I'm in, which I really love as an academic. Um, there's no space to talk about that. And that's what particularly attracted me to a space like this, where we can at least talk about, you know, the emotional impact of the research, the work, the activism we're, you know, we're doing. Um, because it really is so important to see that what we're talking about here is, you know, the destruction of the life support system of the, of the planet. And yet many of us um, often, you know, hide behind scientific analysis of this. So anyway, I'll, I'll shut up there. But I do think that it's really important to acknowledge that many of us are at different stages in understanding, you know, our part in um, educating, agitating, organizing on this issue. But I think it's really important just to acknowledge we have never as a species faced what we're now facing. And I think we need to integrate those um, emotional reactions as well as the empirical and political ones uh, as well. So, sorry, thank you for listening. Thanks so much, Sean. And, and with that, um, I suppose, uh, in, in a way, provocation, um, I would like if, if you'd be willing to go into a breakout room, maybe with a couple of other people and discuss this this question. Um, so we'll we'll put it in the chat again. What can an international alliance of higher education staff, students, activists, others do about the the planetary crisis? Yeah, um, I just wanted. I love that Paula brought in the whole idea of the inner gaze because I really think that at this point there are all these external things that we can do, but I do think the very most important thing that any of us can do is take care of ourselves. Like we can't get frazzled, in my opinion, by doing too much because then we become ineffective. So mm -hmm. I feel like maybe the very first and most important thing that any of us can do is take very good care of ourselves and mm -hmm. be at 100% whenever we decide that we're gonna go out and do something more. Yeah. Yeah, uh, maybe people could thumbs up either if they did anybody else in the in a group come up with that idea as to what we can do, like the first thing being taking care of ourselves. Nobody else. What what else came up in, in the groups? Thanks for that point, uh, Yuda. What what else do people um discuss? Are there any what other points were in the groups? Um. What did you talk about? We talked about the importance of, I'm sorry, did someone else? Yeah, go ahead, Mara. Yeah. The importance of relationality and building the relationships, um, you know, which is a time consuming effort. But uh, without that, you, we really can't build a movement of any kind. So it, it's a time consuming um, effort of love. Uh, but I think it goes along with the self-care because uh, building those loving relationships is, is, is a way of self-care. So um, self-care and, and other care, because we're all one, aren't we? 
and just as it's all one pipeline of the of the fossil fuels um, around the world, uh, if they're in your backyard, they're in my backyard, and um, they're they're in everybody's kitchen and bedroom. So, I think building the the relationships is part of self care and of organizational necessity. I think that's one of the things that came up. I may have worded it differently. But. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, more. Yeah, absolutely. We we need to take care of ourselves and and each other as well. Like building building those relationships between between each other. Um, were there any other people who had a similar point to that? Any other feedback from the groups or 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 something different? What else came out of your conversations? I suppose I can jump in there. Like I had a lovely conversation with Kat and, and Stephanie and Kat shared about a, a network that they have as well. Um, and essentially she's described as a network of action and sort of care and the sort of collective intelligence that's shared across. But what was really interesting in the discussion was how we can use the system on itself so how we choose to use our time and the fact that we are using our time as say academic students activists it is a good signal that we don't necessarily need external support that we can use our time on this type of work because it's really important so i think everybody shared that in our group and stephanie and kat want to jump in Yeah, no, <clears throat> thank you, Mark, for um, summarizing it. I think that was it. I think Stephanie mentioned, I'm just remembering, like, the university as an apparatus is, you know, hijacking the systems to, um, um, yeah, to to further our, our agendas for for the earth um, and for each other. Um, yeah, another thing I mentioned in the beginning was that we, we found that communication and kind of collaboration with other institutions you know, in higher education, it was important for us to have a sense of how the governance structures of the universities are working. Uh, what kind of action are they take, taking to prevent or to maintain the status quo uh, so that we can incorporate that into our organizing and into our PAs, into our discussions. Um, that's that's just an intel intelligence kind of uh, intelligence gathering. Um, but also like one thing that it just stayed in my mind as well from uh, your introduction um, was that this work has kind of cultural flavors and knowing how people are doing this work with their own cultures is like, it's very enriching. And I'm, I'm really um, thankful for that. Yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Kat. And yeah, like I think linking in with, with other people who are making these efforts. So we're not, uh, replicating anything and we're just adding or bringing people together in, in some way to I suppose that that's ultimately what what we would like to be able to do is is either bring people together and, and meet other people and you know grow grow the collective that that's already kind of doing the work that's do you know what I mean that that's kind of happening already um because it sometimes it appears to me to be quite fragmented um so so just finding ways to come together um did anybody else have anything else along that lines in their meeting Callum yeah well I think um <clears throat> I don't want to speak on, on behalf of Uda and, and Paul but something just the knowledge sharing spreading the word um came up in, in our meeting I think that's one of the fundamental the Basic things that we that we can do. Um, I think it has been spoken about is to make sure that we're not all doing the same thing, repeating the same thing. And um, precisely because um, you know you, people are time poor in in this profession in universities and so on. People do get burnt out easily. Um, that came up in our in our discussion as well. But also like so yeah, there's sharing what we're doing, but I think also. Um, Again, this came up is is the unlearning that we have to do to to really pick apart the um the kind of systems and and structures and 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 how they work um and and how they keep us down in, in many ways um 
and, and that being part of the, the, the spreading of knowledge and so on as well. Thanks. Well, was there anything else? Um, yeah, that's that uh, Maura is saying. There's not, it's a really important point not to be all doing the same thing uh, separately. Yeah, it's that's it. And, and it's finding those couple collaborations. I suppose that's a good thing about this conference as well is that I'm learning a lot about what other people are doing that is quite similar to what we're trying to do as well and, and try and find ways to, to work together. Um, was there anything else? Sorry, go ahead. Come. I, I think I saw Michelle. Did you put your hand up? Would you like to speak? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I just want to pick up on a point that uh, John Barry spoke about, about the, the responsibility of, um, of academics, you know, who have tenure, who have a more permanent position at the university and universities have become very uh, precarious work in the sort of neoliberal disposition. I just thinking I'm on my second five year contract at the university. Um, and so, um, yes, yeah, so, so I think that's quite critical. And, 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 and just also the, um, the, the sort of status of, you know, I guess in, uh, being a academic um, does 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 give give you a certain amount of uh, I don't want to um for a lack of word uh, power, um, but but it's like how you use that that knowledge. And I was just saying, like like a lot of my colleagues working on climate change are disciples of the Paris Agreement, uncritically. Um, the scientists, the engineers, so, and 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 so I'm I'm wondering how these group of people can continue to work in this kind of reductionist manner. This sort of um, so 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 yeah so 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 you know so I think so part of the responsibility of those of us who are thinking you know yeah differently relationally. Um, bringing other ideas of you know many worlds in one world, dif um, different ways of being into this this conversation. Um, yeah, I guess I, I, it's important to kind of strengthen you know our voices and and also the importance of building yeah collaboration and alliances uh, you know outside of the university and and bringing those spaces in but but just to say the university is precarious i mean uh, just to uh, you know moira is also reminding us how you know if you're a, a critical voice you know you you're likely to many people are getting fired uh you know people that are, are, are have are, have strong voices against the um the struggles in gaza and so so we yeah so we need to also build our solidarity um, yeah to remind the university that yeah it is a colonial institution but it is a space where you know we are responsible for yeah I guess thinking doing um, and we need to I guess uh, strengthen that responsibility you know for for different ways of thinking so yeah thanks thanks Michelle. Yeah, um, we're kind of, I, I, I'm sad that we're coming to the end of our time because what, what we normally have been doing so far is is we, we take pretty much the whole day and, and have a proper people's assembly and go deep and, you know, really, yeah, get 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 somewhere, I think, you know, in, in, in clarity. And it's really difficult to do that in an hour, but maybe, maybe we can do it again. Uh, you know, we can, we can, you know, uh make some suggestions for questions that we can answer together and 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 meet up again and you know with, with more time um more did you want to say something and then maybe we'll we'll kind of start to wrap up and yeah i was just going to suggest that you could uh do a mushrooming session which is the post conference uh opportunity to create more sessions cool oh great thanks thanks for letting us know about that we'll must check that out um we we had some plans maybe to to wrap up towards the, at the end uh mark and john did did you want to kind of wrap up if 
Yeah, maybe yeah. I, could, I could start and maybe Mark could um, row in. I mean, it, we absolutely need more of these conversations. We're in for a very, very difficult time ahead, folks. There's no doubt about it in terms of whether it's the AMOC, that's the, the Gulf Stream here in Northern Europe, which is showing signs of weakening, which could perhaps plunge us into, you know, minus 20 um, degree winters, which, which you never experience, you know, the ongoing extreme weather events around the world. The reality is, if even if all of us here on this panel were to be the new world government, we just baked in so much inevitable climate destabilization and ecological damage that we have to seriously start talking about um, adaptation um, as well as um, mitigation. And particularly for, for those of us in the academy or adjacent to the academy, the importance of knowledge in communicating and serving our communities I mean, for too long, I think a lot of particularly the colonial Western model of the economy has been like a vampire. We float into communities, we suck out the data and we go away and write our, our research. And that has to stop now. Many of us, again, we're speaking probably from a very Irish context. We're in publicly funded, state funded institutions. You know, our job is to serve our communities, not to serve corporations, or necessarily even the state, uh, and yet they are the two stakeholders and in inverted commas that universities mostly deal with, businesses and policymakers. We have to really start moving beyond that. Um, and that is going to take some courage. It's going to take some um, collaboration. And for those of, those of us with some influence to try and push that dial. But I, I, I do welcome groups like, you know, Scientist Rebellion, you know, who were an offshoot of, of Extinction Rebellion, of, of trying to bring into the academy that sense of giving us a sense of collective um, obligation and indeed courage um, of the convictions. I mean, if you're reading the science and the social science about, you know, the injustices that are already happening, the, you know, the reparations that are absolutely needed, not just the slavery reparations, which sadly uh, Sir Keir Starmer, the, the UK Prime Minister, has, has now rejected. You know, the reality is Britain built its wealth on the back of slavery and exploitation. Never mind that then, many of us in the global north, it, it's on a, um, a diet of climate exploitation and carbon reparations. So we have to integrate the, the justice claims with the science claims. Um, that's going to be a tough struggle. Um, but I do think we need to come together. We can't do this alone. Um, and that's the most important thing that we can do as well as self-care, collective organizing is a form of caring for each other. Because the reality is, what if we're the people we've been waiting for? You know, there is no, you know, Calvary and God help us, Elon Musk isn't going to save us. He wants to bugger off to Mars as the solution. We have to recognize that we can change this um, horrible situation that we're now facing into but it means we have to work in a different way. And sometimes that's about, about being subversive. So the last point I, I'd leave you with is, is a kind of a uniquely kind of Irish insight into how to navigate the political world. It's easier always, always to ask for forgiveness than permission. Thanks, John. And I suppose just a couple of actions maybe to bring to the next step for people I think the mushroom mushrooming session is definitely something that we should coordinate and organize to build on this. And I see that Sinead and Callum are putting in the links. The Climate Justice Universities Union also have drop in sessions and would welcome, you know, people to drop in. So Sinead might talk a little bit more about this. And to follow on from John, like what's interesting is a phrase I sort of came across recently and I like is like we have to rebuild the ship while we're still sailing. We can't stop everything. You know, we just can't stop, but we have to be subversive and, and think radically. It's it's radical interventions at this stage. So look at it, it's been a pleasure and a joy to be to be here. I'm gonna hand back to Sinead maybe to conclude. Thanks so much, everyone. Um I don't I don't know how to to put a finish on it, but the the word that's coming into my head is is an Irish word and the Irish in Irish, there's there's a lot of meaning in in our indigenous language, and something that's come up in our in our um our kind of assemblies that we've held around the countries is, is 
how important this this it's a it's it's a very uh, nature based language and it's a very um our, uh, it's it you know it was colonized you know we the colonization we lost it people were you know kick you killed really for speaking Irish you know that that's that's how they got they really got rid of our language you know um there's there's little pockets of it and we we try to to revive it but but anyway the the word is is slon and and slon is how we say goodbye but it also means health so when when we say goodbye we don't just say you know whatever but we wish people health so so that's what I'll I'll say slon slon live means health health to you all Thanks, everyone. Gurumila Mahagut also means may good be with you. It's our way of saying thank you. It's may good be with you. Gurumila Mahagut.